Welcome back to Let's Play Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga. Coming at you in post here. Uh, this is unusual for this Let's Play. Most of it's been live so far. But uh, a lot of these bonus bosses, uh, the fights are very long, very repetitive. And yeah, honestly, the, that's the main reason I'm doing this in post is that a lot of the fights are really samey. Now, after the Guardians have made the scene, as demonstrated with Feng Huang, you can go back to all the various areas, and you will find guys hanging outside the walls. Uh, this wall right here is actually in the red section of Ajna, or the red configuration, and uh, you can only access it there. Now, here's our skills. Uh, the main takeaways here is Cielo now has Salvation, uh, Gale now has Ragnarok, he also has Executioner set, although I never ended up using it. And Surf has Death Flies. Uh, these are the best healing and damage scale skills I can have available to me. Uh, one notable ultimate skill that I do not have access to is Null Ailment. I did not bother getting that because it just took a. It would take a ton of grinding and it would uh, make us way over leveled and make the fights way easier. So I, I decided to pass on that. Now, for the Guardian fights, I decided not to speed these up because they ended up going quicker than I expected. Huang Long here is one of the more dangerous ones because he's just got a very simplistic style of fighting. Also, I just realized I have my fan going in the background. Let me turn that off. Sorry if that was a bothersome noise. Oh, that's gone now. But yes, Huang Long. Uh, so this guy, he's very straightforward. He's ice focused and he just uh, mind charges, power charges, and buffs up his attacking stats. And then he lets it loose on you, which is honestly uh, more effective than the other Guardians. A lot of the other Guardians just mess around using really weak skills. Now, other skills that I have set, since I have time to go over that, uh, I had Null Expel on everyone for not any of the Guardians or even uh, the leader of the fight. And I'm sorry, this is not Huang Long, this is Dragon Long. Sorry, they have very similar names. But yeah, check out the damage off of Ragnarok and Death Flies when charged up. Pretty sweet. And yeah, a lot of these Guardians have little things they say at the uh, various thresholds for their fight, but yeah, he's still buffing himself up. Uh, definitely, uh, if you aren't debilitating this guy, uh, you will want access to at least Dekaja, because otherwise these attacks will uh, tear you up. And as a matter of fact, after this fight, I actually set Rakukaja on Gale so I could mitigate some of the incoming damage from the later bosses. But yeah, not any of the Guardians, but one of the fights after the Guardians will want Null Expel and check out this Revelation. Oof. And this Mabufudine. Uh, watch what this does to Gale. Oh, uh, no, it was Cielo, I'm sorry. I could have sworn it was Gale who got killed by that. Well, whatever. Anyways, after that, uh, this fight is in the bag. Also, uh, because I got a lot of money, I bought the Revival Orb, and yeah, infinite use Revival Gems. Very nice. Too bad we weren't able to get that earlier, but whatever. But yeah, once you've uh, got your buff set up and you can just power charge and mind charge, this fight's basically in the bag, it's otherwise not too complicated, and he doesn't have his charges set up anymore, so we just are uh, able to run roughshod on him. He's not going to get a chance to set up again before we finish. But yeah, I have also have the uh, health boosting skills set on everybody. Uh, just because we're not as high leveled as we could be, so having that extra 20% to 30% HP is really handy for surviving all these attacks. Uh, I actually did not go over what Salvation does. Salvation is uh, fully restores your HP and cures all status ailments. Now, I'm not going to change, aside from adding Rakukaja, I did not change my uh, skill sets at all for any of the Guardian fights, and that's Dragon Lawn taken care of. But before we uh, go to the final boss of this uh, video, which is Huang Long, uh, I did do a slight modification to Cielo's skill set. Yeah, these guys get pretty good EXP, so lots of level ups to be had by fighting these guys. Not that it really matters for Heat and Argilla. Now, after defeating Dragon Long, you get the Azure Orb. Also, there was actually a treasure I missed in Ajna in this node back here. Get a Soma, another one for the pile, which we'll actually be using a couple this video. Anyway, next order of business, we head to Anahata. Now this is the yellow wall we broke down to get ammo way well, long ago, and there is actually no guy over here to point out that somebody is waiting for you. Uh, you just have to come to this door that previously did not have anything behind it, but now, this guy is here. And he turns into Wei Shuan. Wei Shuan. I'm sorry, my Chinese pronunciation is abysmal. Uh, apologies if that uh, really hurt your ears. 
uh, Weishan. I, I think that's how it is. But this uh, Weishan is a bit of a comedy routine for you. <laughs> Looks like uh, his own parts do not get along very well. But this fight is actually very simple. Now, pointedly, I did not have uh, Cielo set up to debilitate here. Uh, and I did not have uh, Gale use any buffs either. That is because uh, Weishan, in comparison to the other Guardians, he will always just counter those with Dekaja and Dekunda. Incidentally, uh, if you attack him before he gets a chance to do anything, he'll have a little bit of uh, extra dialogue where he chastises you for attacking a guy who hasn't even attacked you first. But yeah, at this point, now that we've got our charges up, uh, then I have uh, Cielo launch debilitate. Now, going over the attacking skills we're using, uh, Ragnarok and Deathflies, Ragnarok is the ultimate physical attack skill in the game. It is almighty type, so it runs off your strength stat, but it is not resisted by anything, save one exception, which we will be getting to in the next video. But otherwise, Ragnarok, best physical attack skill in the game, as uh, icing on the cake, it lowers the enemy's defense when it connects. Now, Surf skill, on the other hand, Death's Flies, uh, this is a Mega-type Almighty Damage skill, and as I pointed out in the Beelzebub fight, anything that is not immune to instant death is just outright killed by it. Obviously, that does not help us in boss fights, but it's nice for when dealing with random encounters who do not have absolute death resistance. Now, the reason I'm using Death Flies over Last Word is because it is a little bit more expensive, but it also deals ever so much more damage, and when you factor in the uh, multiplicative boost from Mind Charge, uh, that actually adds up quite a bit over all the attacks we launch throughout these fights. By comparison, Last Word, under similar circumstances, would probably only do like 800 to 850 damage. And yeah, just, uh, these guys are actually the most talkative of the Guardians, uh, just going with their little comedy routine. It does not seem like the turtle portion of Wichan is, uh, particularly enthusiastic about this fight. Anyways, at this point he starts using Rage, uh, he can throw out Magic Repel, which does not matter because our fights are all almighty based, and he'll start using mid-tier Earth skills. Honestly, this guy is not much of a threat to anyone, because in this game we do not have anybody weak to Earth, uh, pretty much the only thing we could do differently here is uh, bring Argilla along and just uh, this guy would do even less damage, but yeah, Weishan, e the easiest of the Guardians by far, he just is not too threatening. And yeah, we just uh, continue as uh, we were for the rest of the fight, doesn't change up too much. And this is why I'm doing it in post, because all the Guardian fights, they are all extremely similar, and when you're using all mighty skills like this, uh, they get very repetitive. Uh, yeah, I could set up for each boss individually, but there's just not really any good reason to. Besides, for uh, the passives that I need for Huang Long, and there are definitely some passives and skills that you absolutely need for that fight, some amount of grinding was going to be necessary, so I may as well just get all of the skills that allow me to bypass the annoying gimmicks of the fight. I mean, I could set up, like, I don't know, Wind Magic or uh, Ice Magic or whatever this guy's vulnerable to but yeah, it's just a bunch of extra effort. And honestly, I don't... Deathflies does enough damage that I'm actually not sure if an amp plus a boost to an elemental skill will outpace the damage it can deal. Maybe I should uh, check that out. Something for another day. But yeah, this fight's in the bag with that last skin. I honestly gotta feel bad. This guy really does not want to keep fighting. He does not want to die. But uh, that is, this is an RPG, and we are set to kill this guy. As you can see, towards the end, starts using Bloodbath. Could be nasty if he gets a crit, but yeah, we're pretty much uh, good to go here. Now, one thing you could do, uh, you see I'm having Gale and Surf uh, Power Charge and Mind Charge on the same turn. Another thing you could do is, uh, like, I could have swapped out Surf's uh, Media Rama for Tarukaja, and I could have alternated the turns where these guys charge up and just have them buff each other. So, like, uh, Gale uses my Power Charge, uh, then Surf uses Taru Kaja, then Gale uses Ragnarok, and uh, Surf Mind Charges. Next turn, Gale Makakaja, so uh, Surf can do the boosted Death Flies. But uh, th this way works just fine, too. And Weishan, yeah, he is not terribly difficult. Coming up to a guy who's slightly more interesting, but again, not too difficult. Uh, warping back to Manipura after we get the Copper Orb. And yeah, nothing else in this room. We find a member of the Solids, beat up and cast aside over here. She doesn't have too much interesting to say. I like her pink hair, though. 
but yeah. This was this hallway uh, back in our second trip to Manipura where I pointed out that this leads to a dead end, but now a presence can be felt behind the door. And waiting for us behind the store is a guy whose name I forget is in what it is in this game. Uh, usually it's Byaku. I think it's Baihu in this game. Yes, Baihu. But this guy is physically focused, and he mostly launches normal attacks. Uh, when he's not doing that, he also has force magic he can use. He has Mazanma, Zanma, Shockwave, and Zandine. Uh, he does have access to Dekunda, but he doesn't use it until he's in critical health, so I, I'm actually able to set up a full stock of debilitates here. I also have uh, Gale buff us up a little bit before going in on the offensive, just because I wasn't quite sure what this guy does. Now, uh, because Gale has made it all the way to Ragnarok, he actually has access to the Fizz Repel shield. And if you set that up, this actually makes, uh, at the very least, the first half of the fight much easier, where he just uses physical attacks. Because you can just bounce his attacks right back at him, and he does not have any hard physical resistance, so it's not like he's going to drain those or anything. But I ultimately decided that that was unnecessary and also boring, and also it would make this fight take longer overall, because Gale wouldn't be contributing on offense. Which, uh, now that I've got two Makakajas up, he's going to start doing that. But yeah. Once again, it's the same routine. Now, this fight goes by a little bit quicker than the Michan fight, because this guy just isn't as uh, durable as Michan is. And also, of course, he does not get rid of our uh, debilitates right away, so we can enjoy increased damage against him for a lot longer. But yeah, Ragnarok, Death Lies, and yeah. Man, that was actually really good. <laughs> Uh, it's great having these endgame level skills. I was actually playing a little risky here by uh, Gale firing that Ragnarok off. He's pretty close to dead, but I kind of lucked out here. I didn't know that he was going to waste most of his turns doing stuff like that. So yeah. And Gale survived. I think at this point I just forego the charging and go straight into attacking him because he's so close to dead. Yeah. He does survive this, so there's another round of combat to go. But yeah, the HP cost, that is the big drawback of Ragnarok. It's a very powerful skill and a very useful one, but using it mo like twice in a row, and you actually don't have the uh, HP to utilize it three times in a row. Using it twice in a row puts you on death's door, and that is super, super risky. So that's why uh, I don't quite like it as much as other skills in this game, although it's still very good, and when I first played the game, it was uh, such a great boon to my offense, it was the preferred thing for me to use. But yeah, more experience, a Soma drop, and good stuff. Now, aside from the level ups, the money, and various other rewards we get for defeating him, We get the white orb. There is not anything we can do directly with these orbs, but you do need to uh, collect them all as proof that you defeated the guardians in order to progress to the final fights. Now, after we defeated all the guardians, something changes in Ajna again. You find these two girls out here, and hmm, what do you need to know? Well, uh, been in there several times before, actually. Huh, that doesn't sound familiar though. Hmm, interesting. Do they even have phones in the junkyard? I guess not. But yes, uh, a man with beautiful silvery wings. Huh. wonder who they could be talking about. Well, that is our next bonus boss. Now, to get to this guy, you have to set Ajna to the white configuration, and he'll be waiting for us in the courtyard. And this is a reasonably difficult fight, but not too bad if you're prepared for it. Uh, the main thing that I have going into it is Nullic Spell. If you have that on at least one person, although preferably you have it on everyone, uh, this fight is less threatening on certain turns, but he still has things you need to watch out for. Absolutely bring Rakukaja so you can b bolster your defense. I don't... He definitely has Dekunda. Uh, he uses it a few times throughout the fight. I don't know if he has Dekaja. But certainly better to err on the side of caution. I only set up Rakukaja twice just in case. Partially, uh, oh. And he's reacting to the ring that we got from the woman, the body of the woman on the third floor of Ajna. Looks like that was someone important to him, and he does not believe that we, were, we didn't kill her. 
Now, these fights run kinda long, so I actually took the liberty of speeding up the footage here, and I've supplemented the uh, big battle uh, music theme for this game, the standard boss theme. Uh, Metatron actually does use this theme, although Huang Long, who is coming up after this, does not. Yeah, he has Revelation, so he can meet you there. His starting turn's not too threatening. He'll uh, alternate between throwing out Revelation, he'll have Mahamon, and if you've debuffed him, he'll Daekundo that stuff off. So to start off with, it's just the standard pelting him with charged up Ragnaroks and Deathflies. One thing that uh, really works in our favor, and also has Maragidine, for Metatron is that he only has two turns, so if he misses, he loses his entire turn compared to other bosses who can still go. Yeah, he misses right there. So yeah, right here you can tell he doesn't use Dekunda every turn, so we can set up uh, a full stock of debilitates if we're lucky, and that's uh, pretty handy. Yeah, that uh, Ragnarok cost of Ragnarok HP cost uh, just way too much for uh, Gale to foot every turn. So occasionally I am just gonna have to uh, stop and use Salvation to get him topped off. But yeah. Now, uh, if you try to use Mind Charge and Power Charge while you already ha have it active, uh, don't worry about wasting your turn. The game won't let you use it if it's already active, and it persists until you launch an attack. So you can go quite a while without actually using it up. But yeah, he's fully debilitated now, so I can just focus on laying into him with damage. Uh, this fight is now basically the same until we get to the next phase here, where he says... Well, he just laments the death of Laura again. Now, at this point, he's going to start buffing up his magic, so we want to throw debilitates on him to get that down, because he's going to start using some pretty powerful skills. The first skill, which we should be seeing on this next turn, Megidolaun. Fortunately, we've kept his magic down to a reasonable level, so it did not do too much damage, and we just kind of dodged it outright. And boy, I love those Mahamon turns, just a complete waste of his time. Now, at this point, there is one other skill, and yeah, he says this. It looks like he's uh, losing himself a little bit and lapsing into his Metatron persona. And that is actually something that comes up in the dialogue a couple times in the game. A couple characters, uh, one that you can meet during the uh, King Frost side quest, laments that he's starting to feel more like the demon than his junkyard self. And looks like Metatron on, his, on Death's Door is starting to lapse into that also. But yeah, we're uh, pretty close to done this fight. I used a Soma here just to get healing and MP re restoration all into one. But yeah, he's on red, and yeah, just some good damage. Now there's Fire of Sinai. Fire of Sinai, strongest almighty skill in the game, potentially. Uh, it does about Meggy Delon's level of damage, maybe slightly more on a single hit, but it can hit one to three times. Now, it is an RNG skill, but if it hits twice, uh, it does more damage than either... Uh, Death Flies or Celestial Ray will do. At the very least, it definitely does more than Last Word does. And if it hits three hits, it does considerably more. Mm, yeah, looks like he's lapsing even further in. But he's not going to live long enough to have to worry about the implications of that. Now, we're right at the end here. Just uh, one more round of combat before we can finish him off. Just debilitating him to get his magic back down to a more manageable level. Here's where it gets really scary. If he uses a mind charged uh, Fire of Sinai and it hits three times, that potentially could be a game over right there, especially if you don't have your buffs and debuffs in place. But we, uh, were f we had ourselves prepared, so we took him down with little issue. Yeah, not a terribly difficult fight if you're prepared for it, but uh, can be a scary one at certain phases. Now, for defeating him... We get the Seraph's Quill. Now, unlike the orbs that we've been getting from the Three Guardians, uh, the Seraph's Quill actually does something. If we go back to the large Karma Terminal, which I'm doing right now, this is actually another mantra unlocking item. See, I'm having a bit of trouble navigating the stairs here. Now, whenever you have a mantra learning item, and I don't know if I showed this for King Thrust Ice Crystal, I definitely didn't do this for the Tyrant Skull, uh, you just get a little notification that the Karma Temple has confiscated it, and you uh, can go into the mantra screen, 
you don't actually get dragged to it, so I get a little lost looking for it here, and eventually I just like, okay, I'm just gonna zoom out and find it. But yeah, at this point, I'm just like, okay, zoom out. And yeah, it's in the top right there. It doesn't always end up in an intuitive spot. But yeah, for that, we can learn Fire of Sinai, Repel Expel, and Repel Death. Repel Expel and Repel Death, not really any better than uh, just nullifying those. They don't help at all in the fights where you'd actually want those. But yeah, just a little extra dialogue after you defeat him. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. Do they have ice cream? Mm, no. He was right, though. That does sound like fun. Now, heading back to the Karma Temple. We can find the guy who told us about the Guardians here, and it looks like he's been messed up pretty bad. Hmm. Well, it looks like he kind of just knocked you on your butt. Well, whatever. Apparently he was hurt pretty bad. So, to get to Huang Long, who is the final boss, or final bonus boss we can fight at the moment, we need to go to elevation 12,530, and in the second uh, big teleporter maze, if we come into this wall off to the side, we'll find a red wall wrapping around this corner. We'll find a Karma Temple Guard who's been killed. Now, before we head into the fight, and I checked the door here, but before we head in, I've made a modification to Cielo's skill set. Well, first off, I need to heal my MP, but also I've made a modification to Cielo's skill set. As you can see, he has Null Nerve, Null Panic, Null Mute, and Null Charm. That gives him immunity to all of the ailments in the game that could potentially rob me of control from him. It's very important that you have at least that set on your lead character, as well as Salvation. Now, there is a Blanket Null Ailment skill, but I don't even think I've unlocked it yet, and it's kind of overpowered, and like I said, it takes a ton of grinding to get. And this works well enough, and I beat the fight no problem with just that, so I felt it was kind of overkill to get null ailments. So, Huang Long. This fight takes a little bit of explanation. So Huang Long, to start off, he has multiple phases of attack. Right now he's in support mode. What support mode means is that he will Dekaja and Dekunda any buffs and debuffs that we launch at him. Otherwise, he will launch a normal attack, except on the third turn, he will, and we're about to see it right here, use Celestial Ray. Celestial Ray, strongest uh, almighty attack in the game. It's for severe damage, and it gives your entire party, if they get tagged by it, random ailments. So, that is why we need Cielo equipped with every ailment resist that would rob us of control of them. Now, you see how he went warg there? That means that he's switched modes. Uh, let's see, I think this is Earth mode that he switched into. Each mode that he can switch into has a unique buff or debuff that he can cast. And yeah, here he goes with Mind Charge and another Makakaja. I'm pretty sure this is Earth mode. But yeah, I believe he also has Mind Charge in any mode that he goes into. Now, you may have noticed those Death Flies that Surf has been launching out there. They aren't doing too much damage. And that is because in any mode, save for one, uh, Huang Long has extremely high magic power and is pretty resistant to magical damage. With a full stack of Debilitate and Makakaja, though, we can still do decent damage to him. He also has pretty high vitality. Yeah, he's launching these boosted Materodines. Now, if I wasn't using all mighty skills here, instead we'd need to have uh, elements set up to cover his various modes and... Uh, there is no way of knowing what mode he goes into until he starts using skills. Uh, the only thing that tells you that he switched modes is that he goes, Warg! And there is one specific instance of warging that uh, tells you that he went into a special mode, which we'll be seeing uh, a couple minutes from now, actually. But yeah, uh, definitely uh, come into this fight having uh, the requisite elemental resists for every character, because if he switches into a mode that you're uh, weak to, could get nasty very fast. And yeah, he's back in support mode now. This is honestly uh, a pretty nice mode, uh, because you don't have to worry about taking any serious damage. Now, I actually uh, ticked off the number of turns that he stayed in each mode. Support mode, he seems to always stay in this for just three turns. He'll Dekaja and Dekunda, whatever you throw at him, and then he'll uh, do a Celestial Ray, and then he'll switch to mode the following turn. Uh, Every other mode, uh, it's been really random. Uh, 
He seen at most he seems to be able to stay in a mode for seven turns. At least that's the longest I've seen him stay in a specific mode. Also, this mode has Makanda. But I've also seen him switch in as little as uh, three turns of action, and if not on a support mode phase. Yeah, this is ice mode he's in right now. Now, we're doing pretty paltry damage to him at this point, even with uh, full stacks of buffs and debuffs. Now ye- Oh, and I, <laughs> I over-debilitated him there, I lost count of how many I had CLO to use. Now you may be wondering, is there any way to deal more damage to him? Yes. We're coming up on it soon. Uh, he goes into a special attacking phase, where he launches out high-powered Celestial Rays and Megi Delounds, but his defense plummets when he's in that mode, and we'll be seeing that shortly. And yeah, that's actually basically it. Uh, now, I'm not exactly sure if this is universal, for me, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. He switched into attack mode after six mode changes. I do not know if that's a universal thing or if it's just after a certain number of turns, he will go into attack mode no matter what. And he should be switching into it right about now, I think. Now, I think uh, probably another turn, just watching the video time. Okay, yeah, he's still in this mode. Or did he do another mode switch? I actually was uh, keep looking at my tallies there. Well, whatever. He's not in support mode, so that's actually really good for us. Uh, if he, Okay, there's a mode switch. One thing that is really unfortunate, and here is the one reason I had Dekunda here. <laughs> if you use something like Rakunda or Sukunda, I did not have the corresponding buff to offset that, so that's what I needed Dekunda for. I honestly probably could have uh, skipped on Dekaja, because I was just using Debilitate all the time and give Cielo life gain for better safety, but it ended up not being dead. There we go! When he garrahs with a bunch of exclamation points, he switched into attack mode. Watch this. Bam! Like, what? 2,000 damage there? Bam! Uh, 3,000, 6,133 damage. Now, instead of uh, doing uh, charges, I wasn't sure how long he was going to stay in this, but his defense is just down low, so yeah, hit him with a Ragnarok. 1,300 damage without power charge. Very nice. Now, if you aren't able to kill him there, the fight's going to drag on for a lot longer, obviously, and your first time taking this fight, it's probably going to be like a half hour. I did pretty good on it, though, and we uh, that only took us, like, what, uh, 15 minutes if the footage wasn't sped up, so yeah, pretty good. About as well as the Fang Long fight can go, really. Now, our reward for defeating them, uh, in the same vein as Metatron, first we have to go a little bit behind him. We'll find a hidden room here. Well, hidden from the rest of the Karma Temple, anyway. And the last red wall of the game, we smash this down to get access to a new ammo node. And within this ammo node, we get the golden orb. Very nice. Now, cutting back to a save terminal, just the closest one on uh, the current elevation. Turn in the golden orb, and we get the five gods mantra. Now, what does the five gods mantra have? Well, uh, if you saw how often he was using Celestial Ray, you could probably guess that, well, it has Celestial Ray for us. On top of that, also has Fizz Absorb. Actually, not a terrible passive in this game, uh, because uh, there is no pierce effect on any attacks and no enemies use Ragnarok. But it's not terribly useful, uh, because we're past all the hard fights in the game. Now we've got a sizzle reel of every combo skill in the game, because I needed to... Well, every unique combo skill in the game, because I needed somewhere to get this. Uh, that was Gang Blast, that is just three single target physical skills. Triple Threat here, that is, uh... A two single target skills, and Sukukaja. And Primal Dance here is just a hunt skill on everybody. Yeah, I wanted to show off every unique combo skill here, because uh, it just wasn't really a good place to fit this anywhere else in Let's Play. Genocide, that's technically not a unique combo skill, but it has a unique animation. Uh, there is a single target for version of it. Trisagion, the ultimate fire skill right there. Man, this is going faster than I expected. <laughs> Crystal Dust, uh, that one was really terrible. That one was Frost Breath and two Kaja skills. Here's Fimble Vetter, the ultimate ice skill. 
that's pretty good damage right there. And hey, reinforcements, so we can get right into the next skill, which is Titan, the ultimate uh, Earth skill. Now all these ultimate elemental skills, Narukami, the lightning skill, it requires having elemental amps on characters, and then a Mis Megiddo skill on the last character. Ooh, Sky Thrust, this one is really bad. That one also has a very weird setup for it. Here's uh, Bavaria, the ultimate force skill. But yeah, let me uh, find... Sky Thrust is a force skill, a skill that causes sun. Stun as single target physical attack. Now, before there was Demon Fury, here's Black Sun, the ultimate attack in the game. Check this out. Wow. That might actually be worth uh, setting up for uh, going to the Karma Temple. Now, here's Millennia Curse. This one's actually really bad. It either kills an enemy or it curses them. Yeah, not really great in comparison to the damage dealing ones. That one's just three Mudo skills. Here's two healing skills, Angelic Grace and Seraphic Grace. Angelic Grace requires three instances of Dia, and it casts a Diorama while boosting your defense. Pretty nice, really. Seraph Grace, basically the same thing, and I couldn't show it off there because I wasn't damaged. But it uh, purges status ailments instead. And here's just Fire of Sinai and Celestial Ray, just to show these in footage that is not sped up. But yeah, that's uh, basically every unique combo. There was one that I was not able to get, called Damnation. Uh, according to this guide, it just requires three Hama skills, but that did not seem to actually be the case. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, basically all the side content, save for one bonus boss. So that's where we'll be ending this video. When we come back, it'll be time for the final boss and the ending. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.